Dragon Age is about dominating the battlefield. It's about that moment when you charge, that, that tension of not being certain, and then seeing your characters slice heads off, throw spells, set things on fire, until essentially you bring it to a crashing close and say, yeah, this one I won, now I've got 400,000 more to go. returned the thing that brought me to Bioware in the first place. When I started at Bioware back in, uh, in Baldur's Gate 1 days, we were making the pinnacle of fantasy gaming, and I think we've really come back to that with Dragon Age Origins. What we've done is we've taken the best of high fantasy and the best of darker, lower fantasy and combined them into one game. So you're taking, like the Tolkien, the overarching uh, good versus evil metaphor that draws you through a high fantasy game, but the darker, grayer choice and consequence of something like a George R. R. Martin or a Conan, and we combine them. So you're playing as a gray warden, and you have to save the world, but the way you do that sometimes means you have to make some pretty tough choices. I think with Origins, what we managed to hit is a note of the familiar and yet the uncanny. Uh, it's certainly a game that's going to have elves with pointy ears. Yeah, we're not going to challenge the dwarves. Many of them do have beards, for sure. But within those expectations, we understand them well enough ourselves that we've managed to break a lot of them and say, you know, sure, the elves do have pointy ears, but they're also up until recently enslaved and live in ghettos in the city. This kind of puts you in a place where you know what you're dealing with with an elf, but you don't know what you're dealing with when it comes to Dragon Age. It's a different setting for the familiar to occur, and it will surprise you. It's very, very complicated and intricate. And I mean, this game not only looks realistic, in a way, the story also is quite realistic. You would attempt to put a puppet on the throne, and every soul here knows it. The better question is who will pull the strings? So this is a world already with a lot of conflict going on, and now when we start off Dragon Age Origins, a blight, there's these darkspawn rising back from under the ground are coming to consume the Earth once again, and this is what you're fighting against. Farewell, Mother. Do not forget the stew on the fire. I would hate to return to a burned-down hut. Oh, it is far more likely you will return to see this entire area, along with my hut, swallowed up by the blight. I... All I meant was... Yes, I know. The characters in the game aren't two-dimensional. The, the way that a player interacts with them is going to change uh, who they become. They have their own motivations and their own desires and their own hopes and dreams. You're going to have party members uh, talking to each other, they're bantering. Having Morgan and Wynn in your party at the same time, um, because they're both majors but coming from very different schools of thought on magic, they're going to be a lot of bickering, a lot of different discussion on the way magic works, just by having those two people in your party. They're reacting to everything that you do. You'll take an action in, in the world, and a party member will, will speak up, and perhaps they'll object, perhaps they'll approve, and you may change your, your course of action based on that, or suffer the consequences, right? The, the consequences are what the game is all about. It's like dancing on a field of razor blades, so it may be possible to make it through Dragon Age Origins with uh, everyone happy, but you're gonna have to be really careful about what you're doing. There was a lot of writing that went into Dragon Age. It appears it will be civil war after all, despite the darkspawn. Pity. When people talk about the world in the game, uh, it's, it's with the idea that, that, that there's more than what they're talking about, and I think that comes across to the player, right? No one has a place here. Your farmers wish to be merchants. The merchants dream of being nobles, and the nobles become warriors. No one is content to be who they are. When I play games, you can tell very quickly, usually, if, uh, if what, what is present is all that's been created. And then you, there's other, other times when you're reading a book or when you're playing a game, and you can sort of feel immediately that there's this whole breadth of, of history that the game creator is just dying to get you to fall in love with. And that's what I'm hoping, that, that the, the fans will get into this world and they will fall in love with it and, and uh, see exactly um, what we've put together for them and, and value it.